I'm here with Kyle Bader, and Knative is a new eventing framework available for Kubernetes, and I'm curious how Red Hat is integrating that. Knative is, is uh, you know, because it's uh, worked its way into Kubernetes, there's also folks working on, you know, making that available in OpenShift. Um, and I think the interesting thing about Knative is it gives you a place to send sort of events and notifications from uh, different applications and kind of stitch them together into um, kind of like, like, like chaining services together. So uh, one of the more popular uh, things that a lot of folks do is they'll use it as part of like a development pipeline. So um, they might have uh, a notification that triggers off like CI um, for part of their continuous, continuous integration where they're building up artifacts and then they're running some sorts of unit tests or functional tests against them. Um, but kind of the, the, the more interesting things is um, in, my, in my role I am as an architect at the storage BU, I do a lot of work with um, analytics workloads and machine learning workloads. And there is some kind of really interesting potential of, of using Knative as kind of a, a notification bus and then for triggering functions or, or, or sending data to other, other um, like applications that can then consume them and take actions. So what would be an example of that? So probably uh, one example might be, um, let's say uh, a pattern that we're kind of seeing now is where people are using object stores instead of like a, a more, uh, kind of the more historical like HDFS to store their big data. So they, you know, uh, say they have some sort of streaming or they have some sort of periodic log dump that goes into the object store and that data is just unstructured. Well, one of the things that could be done is um, you can configure the bucket that that data is uh, being uploaded to to generate a notification that could be sent to um, Knative, for example. And then you could have a function or you could have an application that consumes that event and then does something intelligent. And the types of possibilities would be you know, automatically looking at the data and maybe it's just uh, comma delimited text. Taking it and um, re-serializing it and writing out in a, into a, a binary format back into the object store that's uh, more amendable to like query analysis by like your data scientist. So instead of having to scan through really large data sets, they can store it in a compressed, um, compressed columnar format so that if they're only interested in particular columns of the data, they don't have to scan the entire thing, so it's much more efficient. So it, you know, if you're able to chain these things together and it's all happening automatic behind the scenes, you don't have to have a data engineer who regularly has to take, you know, sch schedule some sort of ETL job or, or to, to reconform the data from the text into, it can be all part of like a pipeline where you have applications or you have sensors that are pushing data into the object store and then that just triggers kind of automatically um, changing the, the structure of the data to make it uh, easier for your data science teams to interact with it. So, so basically you get some efficiency there where, where you're not having to wait for all of the ETL processes to happen, you're, you're doing it more proactively. It makes for a really nice automated pipeline where it, you know, you, you kind of set it up once and then it, it, it's going to automatically, as new artifacts or as new blobs of logs come into the object store, they automatically get digested and put into whatever format your organization has decided is, is the most efficient. So, so how does that fit in with, uh, with like the OpenShift vision? One of the, the overall things that I think OpenShift and uh, OpenShift operators um, really helps deliver is the idea of giving you a managed service-like experience but uh, under your own auspices and control. So instead of going to a cloud service provider and using like a specialized database service or a queue service or a, or a function as a service, you can instead use kind of open source technologies that went through the operator frame, it makes it really easy to build these different sorts of services and manage these sorts of services for you. So it's like, almost like a managed service and that the operational overhead is very light, but you get the benefits of kind of a, a, a higher level framework as opposed to just, ru just rudimentary raw infrastructure services. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Thanks, Kyle. Thank you.